the members of the committee and our esteemed resource persons, ladies and gentlemen present here today. I would like to welcome all of you here in the Senate. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at pagpapunlak sa aming uh, invitasyon. This organizational meeting of the Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification and Reconciliation is now called into order. This uh, representation is deeply honored to be elected as the chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, a position I am holding for the first time. And I am fully committed to helping the defense organization and our armed forces through meaningful legislation and budgetary interventions in realizing its goals and objectives. Today, we will formally organize our committee and thereafter, we will proceed to the briefing that will be given by the Department of National Defense under the leadership of its officer in charge, Senior Undersecretary Jose Faustino Jr. and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, led by its newly appointed Chief of Staff, General Bartolome Vicente Bacaro, here represented by Vice Admiral Romel Anthony Santo Domingo Reyes. And before we proceed, allow me first to acknowledge the presence of our, the members of the committee who are with us today. Senator Riz Honteveros, Senator Nancy Binay, and we also have uh, Senator Bong Revilla, who is uh, logged in online. And with the presence of our colleagues, we now declare the presence of a quorum. Uh, Senator Revilla, do you have any opening remarks? Okay, thank you uh, to our honorable chairperson, members of the committee, uh, distinguished colleagues, our resource persons and guests. Magandang uh, hapon po. I uh, join our chair in welcoming you to this uh, first meeting of, of the Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification and, Recon and Reconciliation. I'm honored to be uh, elected uh, Vice Chairman uh, of this committee, mamaya po ay mamanifest siya ng ating Chairman, and I have uh, high hopes na mas uh, magagampanan pa natin ng ating mga uh, responsibilidad, hindi lang sa committee ito, kundi uh, pati na rin sa mga tao sa pamamagitan ng pagtatalakay at uh, paghimay natin ng mga panukala at resolusyon na mas makapagpapaigi ng ating uh, national defense at siguridad ng bansa. I look forward to a uh, fruitful briefing from the national, uh, from the uh, Department of National Defense and Armed Forces of the Philippines. Uh, pamamagitan nito, uh, hangat po nating maging instrumento tayo ng pagsasabatas ng mga makabuluhang uh, panukala para sa bansa. May kasabihan nga sa isang mahalagang yugto sa, ng Japan, enrich the country, strengthen the military. By coming together today, we stress the importance and uh, sacredness of our national defense and security and join in the call for true and lasting peace, unification, and reconciliation. Uh, nawa ay uh, kasabay ng pagwagaway natin sa ating bandila ay tuluyan na rin maghilom ang mga suga, bunga ng mga pagsubok ng nakaraang tungo sa kapayapaan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator uh, Bong Revilla. And now we shall begin with the organization of the committee with a few customary administra administrative formalities. The uh, Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, as provided under Rule 10, Section 13, Subsection 25 of the Rules of the Senate, has the following jurisdiction. And I quote, all matters relating to national defense and external internal threats to national security, peace, internal armed conflict resolution, political negotiation, cessation of uh, hostilities, am amnesty, rebel returnees, integration, and development, national unification and reconciliation, the armed forces of the Philippines, pension plans and fringe benefits of war veterans and military retirees, citizens, army selective service, ports, arsenals, military camps and reservations, coast, geodetic and meteorological surveys, civil defense and military research and development. Our Legislative Committee Secretary for the Committee on National Defense is Ms. Charlene Claire Fuentes Olay. Is she here? 
Ang galimay, mas mo para makita yung kagandahan mo. Pursuant to the same rule, the committee is composed of 19 members. The representation was duly elected as chairperson during the plenary session last July 26, 2022, and the following members were elected in plenary session last August 2 and 3 of 2022. We have as our vice chairperson, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla, Senator Ramon Bato de la Rosa, Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino, and Deputy Majority Leader, Senator J.V. Ejercito. We also have as members, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Grace Po, Senator Wynne Gachalian, Senator Sonny Angara, Senator Alan Peter Caetano, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Chis Scudero, Senator Pia Caetano, Senator Lito Lapid, Deputy Majority Leader Senator Mark Villar, Deputy Minority Leader Senator Risa Ontiveros. The following officers of the Senate are our ex officio members, Senator Joel Villanueva, the Majority Leader, Senator Coco Pimentel, Minority Leader, and Senator Lauren Ligarda, the Senate President Pro Temp. May I respect, respectfully present for the adoption of the body the rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation as the internal rules of the committee. Mr. Chair. Senator, Senator yeah. Revilla. I move that we adopt the rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation as in the internal rules of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. The second the motion. Thank you. Uh, there is a motion by Senator Revilla and seconded by Senator Risa Ontiveros. There is a motion for the adoption of the said rules as uh, the committee's internal rules. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries and aid of legislation are hereby adopted as the internal rules of the committee. And these rules shall guide the operation and conduct of the meetings, hearings, and investigations of the committee. And before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, the Deputy Majority Leader, Senator J.V. Hersito, and Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Do you have any opening remarks? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, happy to be in your committee, the better one. No comment. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you both. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, any opening remarks, opening statements? Okay. Now that we have formally organized the committee, we will proceed with the briefing with the officials of the Department of National Defense, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and other agencies. May we request our committee secretary to please acknowledge all of them and indicate their respective offices and official designation for the record. Uh, Comsec, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, for today's uh, organizational meeting, we are joined by our representatives from the following agencies, the Department of National Defense. We have General Jose Faustino Jr., officer in charge. Um, he is joined by Undersecretary Ignacio Madriaga, Assistant Secretary Gavin Edhawan, Assistant Secretary Joselito Ramos, Commodore Ruben Fajardo Jr., and Attorney R.J. Lim. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, representing its Chief of Staff, General Bartolome Bacaro, we are joined by Vice Admiral Romel Anthony Santo Domingo Reyes, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Brigadier General Romel Roldan, Brigadier General Glenn June Kalambuhay, Colonel Romel Cordova, Brigadier General Ahmad Omar, and Colonel Ivan Opera. Also with us is the National Security Advisor, Secretary Clarita Reyes Carlos, who is with us virtually. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec uh, Claire. Our distinguished resource persons and guests may now proceed with their uh, presentations, if you have any. 
And as chairperson, I am particularly interested about your priority measures for this 19th for this 19th Congress updates about the AFP modernization program and the general direction that the defense cluster is taking under this administration. Just You may just focus on these points. And b before you uh, proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our, one of our vice chairs of uh, the Committee of National Defense, Senator Bato de la Rosa. Uh, Secretary Faustino, do you have any PowerPoint to... Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, on behalf of the defense establishment, we would like to... Thank uh, the Senate, particularly this uh, this uh, committee, for uh, inviting us over and present our uh, legislative agenda. And uh, we have prepared, sir, uh, Your Honor, we have prepared uh, a, a, a presentation, a very brief uh, presentation, about our uh, priority legislative uh, measures that we wanted to be pushed uh, in the Senate. And. Uh, Regarding the modernization, sir, we, 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 do, we do not have the presentation right now, but uh, we, we can uh, present uh, to the body uh, uh, on, a, on a prearranged uh, time, sir, if, uh, with the indulgence of the, the sen good senator. I have a presentation right now for the priority legislative agenda, sir. Can you please proceed? Yes, sir. Thank you. Please. Uh, Modernization. I'm sorry, uh, Your Honor. We have a presentation for the moderni modernization also later, in a while. Yeah. So, sir, uh, once again, sir, good afternoon. Uh, we would like to present our priority legislative measures. Next slide, please. May I proceed now, uh, Your Honor? Please do so. Yes, okay. Uh, as a background, uh, these are the reasons uh, for uh, why we are pushing for uh, uh, the next uh, measures, legislative measures. Uh, number one is for uh, for it to be responsive to changing and evolving uh, global security landscape and the regional concerns. Also to strengthen conditions of uh, stability mechanisms we also have to address the current and future conventional and non-conventional security threats and challenges. And uh, of course, to establish a comprehensive national defense uh, posture. Next slide, please. Yes, sir. Allow me to continue, sir. The following are the priority legislative measures that it deems necessary to achieve uh, the aforementioned purposes, as I mentioned earlier. First is the National Defense Act. Uh, then we have the Mandatory Reserve Officers Training Corps and the Philippine Defense Industry Development Act. Also, we have the, uh, the uh, lesser priority bills. We have the Defense Acquisition Act, the Special Defense Economic Zone Authority, the Disaster Resilience Act, the Philippine Veterans Affairs Authority, the Philippine Maritime Zone Act, and the Service Employment Rights Act. Next slide, please. Uh, excuse me, uh, Secretary Faustino. Yes, sir. Itong the, the, the first three uh, priority bills, ito yung talagang uh, kailangan reprioritize. Yes, sir. Uh, y yung, mga ibang, uh, yung mga ibang bills, pwedeng sumunod na lang. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yung, yung tatlong priority bills, sir, yung first two of the, those bills were uh, mentioned in the... We aligned sa... sa 
President during the sauna, sir. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, one of our vice chairs, Senator Francis. Please yes, proceed. sir. So for the for the National Defense Act, uh, this is to, to the current future conventional and non-conventional security threats. Dito naman po sa ating ROTC program, train, organize, and mobilize the students for national defense preparedness, including disaster preparedness and capacity building for uh, risk-related situations. And lastly, sir, we have the Philippine Defense Industry Development to the policy reforms that will strengthen the industry's capability to support the development of the industry, provide incentives for firms within the industry and uh, grow and uh, streamline the self-reliant defense posture, itong number three. Next slide, please. So, sir, just a brief discussion of the other priority bills yung uh, natanong nga po, sir, uh, uh, your honor, kanina. For the other uh, deals, you have the Defense Acquisition Act, the purpose of which is to improve the NDA capacity to uh, provide providing special procedure in defense procurement. You have the Special Defense Economic Zone Authority to establish and operate a Special Defense Economic Zone Authority in Camp General Antonio Luna in Lima, Bataan. Then you have the Disaster Resilience Act to establish a department that is sufficiently capable of exercising command, control, coordination, and communication in overseeing the implementation of streamlines, disaster risk reduction, and emergency policies nationwide. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yes, Senator Risa. Mr. Chair, may I just ask the good general, ito po bang Disaster Resilience Act ay, ay para um, scale up yung Office of Civil Defense or totally new department po ito magiging? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ang, ang Department of National Defense po kasi ma'am ang, ano eh, ang, uh, ang chairman ng, ng NDRRMC. Ang secretariat po natin dito is yung, yung OCD. So kung magkakaroon po ng bagong department or yung last po na, na napag-usapan namin when we, were, we went to Abra nung, nung nagkaroon ng Lindol is to come up with an, uh, an entity or an organization that will really streamline itong uh, kasama, kasama naman dito ang OCD, kasama naman dito yung bababa siya hanggang sa local, local dreams, the dream season tinatawag natin dito. Ito naman yun. Salamat po, General. Mr. Chagan, make of record ko lang po. Um, so far kasi I support almost all of the priority legislative agenda na hinahain ni General Faustino. Inote ko lang po kaugnay nitong Disaster Resilience Act. Naalala po natin siguro na nung nakaraang 18th Congress po, General, ay um, hindi natuloy pa yung pagtatag ng Department of Disaster as proposed. Pero bumalik po kami noon, General, dun sa uh, nagkaroon po ng assessment at saka ilang recommendations, strategic recommendations ang NDRRMC. So, interesante po, Mr. Chair, kapag uh, uh, tatrabahuin po natin yung proposed de um, Disaster Resilience Act, kung paano po i-consolidate uh, yung mula sa nakaraan tapos yung hinahain ngayon uh, ng DND. Salamat, General. Salamat, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator, Lama. Senator Nancy. Just a follow-up din sa um, line of questioning ni Senator Ontiveros. So, um, Secretary, parang pumapayag ho kayo, because if I remember it correctly, when you were discussing the department, um, ika-carve out yung disaster response out, uh, paalis na sa DND, and ita-transfer na siya dun sa bagong departamento. So, are you agreeing to that proposal? Yes, ma'am. If it will... It, it will really enhance the the uh, yung ating disaster response. Uh, the the DND is more than willing, ma'am, to to support and help. Kung ano man yung ikabubuti, ma'am, nung ano. Hindi po hindi ko po nakikita ng maging hadlang ang DND sa sa uh, objective na yon, ma'am. Basta isang ikagaganda lang po ng ating disaster response. 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Nancy. An another question, uh, General uh, General Faustino. Yes. How important is this uh, a cre uh, a creation of another department? Don't you think it would add another layer or bureaucracy? That's Did right, sir. Tayong ampera o kasi ba tayo tayo sa departamento maglalagay tayo ng staff. How important is this? All right, now, sir. Uh, I think it is. Uh, Ang, uh, ang pinag-usapan sir dito is yung uh, if, whether it be a department or just an an agency that that will handle uh, as long as sir uh, ma streamline ito in a way na talagang makaka-responde kaagad ang ang, ang pinag-usapan kasi sir dito yung 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 organization ng NDRRMC ngayon uh, sinabi na rin ng pangulo sa ng pangulo sa amin na masyadong maraming Maraming dapat ayusin dahil nga sir masyado maraming agencies na nagkahalo-halo doon. But uh, I think the, the, the idea is streamlining uh, para mas maging responsive but yung decision making ay mas mabilis. Uh, ang uh, uh, nuhuling uh, kami po ay nag uh, nag uh, nagkaroon tayo ng disaster. Ito nga po yung sa Abra. Uh, Napag-usapan din po doon yung uh, uh, kung maaari, baka hindi na kailangan departamento, baka isang ahensya na lang na, na siya talagang mag a ng, ng na mas mabilis, mas responsive na ahensya, sir. Yun ang, ano, sir, be it a department or an agency, mapapag-usapan. I think sir, it was Senator Aimee who proposed Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Uh, is she against the uh, education of uh, the Department of... Uh, Disaster resilience. I cannot say if she's against or not, sir. But ang kanyang pinupush ay uh, uh, more of an, an agency lang or an office that will that will cater to the 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 needs or maging responsive lang po siya dito sa situation. May I know your thoughts on this? Is it really important to create another department for this purpose? Yeah, uh, I think, sir, uh, an agency will do. Uh, an agency will yes, do. an agency will do. Okay. Mr. Chairman, siguro, siguro just to share, kasi nga I attended the hearing, ang problema din kasi yung equipment, wala na, if we create another um, department, yung equipment hindi ata pwede ilipat kasi asset siya ng AFP, for example, yung mga uh, C-130 natin. So yun yung parang naging um, isang issue or naging um, uh, Content, contentious issue dun sa pag-create nga ng bagong departamento because hindi naman sila bibili ng sarili nila um, um, equipment na gagamitin for disaster response. Um, yun lang pa, Mr. Chairman. And I, I would suppose, baka ganun din nga mga yari, even if we create another department. Uh, if if I may, uh, Your Honor. Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Uh, sa... sa sa sitwasyon natin ma'am ngayon sa uh, present na setup uh, particularly ma'am pag sinabi natin itong mga ating mga air assets yung pinag-uusapan natin ito ma'am may talagang nasa DND yan nasa Armed Forces of the Philippines uh, ito naman ma ito ma'am naman ang NDRMC at kung sakali ma magbuo tayo ng isang agency naka kasama kaakibat dito yung suporta ng DND through the Armed Forces of the Philippines so lahat at ng assets nila mam naka ano the, the, the assets will remain with the, with the the agency with the bureau the armed forces of the Philippines pero yung gamit po nito ang magdidikta yung ang mag, para magiging uh, equipment provider or force provider lang po ang ang armed forces of the Philippines at ang, ang department base sa pangangailangan nitong ahensya na na ating bubuin in fact, para Secretary, di ba, isa din nga dun sa nagiging problema ng disaster response natin, e yung kakulangan natin sa equipment. Yes, if I remember, remember it correctly, yung, I think, unang budget hearing na na-attendan ko, tinanong ko, ilan ba yung satellite phone available? And parang sagot sa akin during the time, isa lang daw or dalawa lang? So, I don't know kung ilan na ngayon yung satellite phones available <laughs> na yes. pwedeng gamitin. And, um, even nga yung mga helicopters natin for airlifting, uh, kulang na kulang yan, di ba? Uh, nakita natin yan yung during the previews ng mga bagyo, 
lalo na yung nangyari sa Marikina na kailangan ata mag-airlift. So, yes, doon natin nakita yung kakulangan. Siguro maganda din uh, pag-aralan kung paano din natin matatap yung private sector. Yes. Dahil marami sa kanila may mga air assets pagdating sa disaster response. Yan lang po. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we proceed, uh, Secretary uh, Faustina, Congress President of uh, Senator Lauren Garda, who is held online. Please proceed. Yes, sir. Ma'am, uh, your... Uh, ang... Uh... Patuloy ma'am tayo na nag-improve uh, nag pagdating sa ating disaster response, lalo na sa equipment. That time ma'am, admittedly, kulang ang ating kagamitang panghimpapawid, ang ating mga helicopters nung araw. But ngayon ma'am, medyo mer marami na tayo, moderno na, meron na tayong mga, meron na ito ma'am tayo yung uh, mga Black Hawks. Ang ito ma'am, na-highlight ito nung, ano, eh, nung panahon ng Yolanda, na talagang nawala ng contact yung mga first responder mismo ang tinamaan at uh, na may problema tayo kung paano tayo makakapasok doon sa lugar at kung paano natin matutulungan yung mga nasalanta doon. But uh, rest assured ma'am, yung concern yung totoo yun na talagang walang satellite po nung araw pero hindi naman po ngayon ang sitwasyon natin ngayon at dumamin na rin po ang ating air assets. And ma'am, sa tama pa yung sinabi nyo that we have to coordinate with our private sector na mas makatulong pa sila sa ating uh, disaster response. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Uh, ilan, na, ilan na talaga ang satellite phones ninyo ngayon? Yes, sir. We will get the exact number and uh, we will uh, give you the facts immediately, sir. Thank you. Do you have any questions coming from the senators? Hello. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Francis. Chairman, isang, isang query lang kay uh, General. Uh, I understand the armed forces of the Philippines right now is complying, it's about to comply with Republic Act 10175. I'm referring to the cyber security law. Do we have right now an embedded cyber security office within the AFP? And how, how robust is this? Is this just a central office uh, under your office or per, per organization? Gusto ko lang malaman yung status ng cyber security group natin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Kung mamarapatin po ng, uh, your, your Honor, uh, can I uh, defer to the Armed Forces of the Philippines? Uh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the Armed Forces of the Philippines, sir, based on the defense planning guidance given by the Department of National Defense, we have created the uh, AFP Cyber Security Group. The I AFP Cyber Security Group is designated as a wide service support unit of the AFP. Uh, aside from that, the Army, the I'm sorry, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force have their own respective cyber security units, and uh, including GHQ also has a cyber security unit. So is the AFP uh, to these four units uh, case to their respective uh, area and all of this is uh, basically uh, in orchestrated by the AFP cybersecurity group. Oh, so, the cyber security are and are continuously in the capabilities, uh, mainly for defense, also for for network monitoring. It is essentially for the armed forces, uh, for the defense requirements only, and not yet for national uh, uh, requirements, sir. In I have I have my own cybersecurity school program ongoing right now, uh, which would entail the accommodation of active and uh, members of the armed forces of the Philippines. The next phase would be, I think, in the University of Cincinnati and Ohio. Ongoing uh, I I uh, 
executed the list chat and it's ongoing program now mas mag, mas mainam ma malam niyo yung pang ito kasi para sa inyo yan eh yes uh, your honor we will uh, check on that and we will avail of that kung uh, ano po sa thank you thank you sir. mr chair sir teresa salamat po mr chair kung pwede po ako i am sorry vice admiral reyes pagbalik niyo po may follow up questions lang po ako okay lang po mr chair mamaya na lang po ako magtanong sir you may need to step out okay po i can wait no, no ma'am please ma'am Okay, salamat, sir. Okay. Um, follow up po dun sa um, pagtanong ni San Francis sa inyo. Um, bukod po dun sa AFP Cyber Security Group at kanikaniyang Cyber Security Units ng Philippine Army, Air Force, Navy at GHQ, uh, meron na po ba tayong cyber defense doctrine and in place. Una ko po itong tinanong sa dating National Security Advisor Esperon nung dinidin po na namin yung uh, resolution tungkol sa noy application pa lang for franchise ng dito, Telecomina. Akin pong tinutulan noon. Ang sagot po ni dating NSA uh, Esperon noon ay wala pa. Ngayon po, meron na po ba tayong uh, cyber defense plan o, uh, o doktrina in place, Mr. Chair? For the Defense and the Armed Forces, ma'am, yes, we have a, a manual or a doctrine that we are following. And uh, we, we are continuously developing this to include our, should I say, partnerships and collaborations with other identified uh, government agencies for, for uh, a common capability, hopefully, Ma'am. Salamat po, uh, Vice Admiral. That is very good news to hear po. And uh, I would dare say yung kumite po namin sa pamumuno ni Chair and the whole Senate are looking forward to supporting the AFP as you work with other departments and agencies para uh, i-beef up talaga itong cyber defense doctrine. Salamat, uh, Vice Admiral. Salamat, Chair. Thank you, Senator Risa. Uh, General Frosnin, do you have any other uh... Uh, yes, sir. Allow me, sir, to continue with the the final just final slide, sir. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, sir. We have the uh, Philippine Veteran Affairs Authority. This uh, the aim of this is to integrate the various agencies working for veterans' welfare, and lastly, sir, the Reservist Employment Rights Act. To strengthen the employment rights of members of the citizens armed forces, citizen armed forces, or the reserve force of the armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, next slide, please. And these are the compelling reasons to support, sir. Uh, we re we request for your support based on the guidance from uh, our president to provide a change in the structure of the armed forces of the Philippines that is more responsive to conventional threat to the system of mandatory Institutions. So, Thank you very much. Okay, uh, may I also take this opportunity to uh, 
the position of the department with regard to any plans of action following the uh, tense situation in uh, Taiwan? Yes, sir. Right now, sir, we're closely monitoring what's uh, the, the, the developments in the uh, po nangyayari sa Taiwan uh, between the U.S. and the China, of course, and the military exercises na being conducted ngayon sa paligid ng Taiwan. Uh, so far, sir, uh, we are prepared in any contingency kung sakali man po na uh, magkaroon, magkaroon tayo ng, ng uh, miscalculations. But we, 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 we really do hope that uh, uh, na ma-resolve ito diplomatically and uh, we hope that there will be a peaceful resolution of what's going on in, in, in the side of uh, yung, yung uh, Taiwan area. And uh, uh, right now, uh, the thing that we can do is to closely monitor and uh, we have prepared contingency if ever uh, the worst scenario will, ha will, will happen. And if, we hope so. If the uh, tension in Taiwan will escalate, how, how, are go how are we going to repatriate our OFWs there? Yes, sir. Uh, I understand we, we have around 42,000, according to uh, Vice Admiral Reyes. We have 42,000 OFWs working uh, in Taiwan. Sir, uh, per last uh, presentation that I got, it's around 140 to 150 Filipinos. Filipinos. Oh, yeah, Filipinos. Yung, yes. Yung uh, na nakatira na kapag asawa, may pamilya na doon. Then you have the OFWs also. So, yung 140, including the OFWs. Yes, included na po yan, sir. So if tension will escalate, so we have to be for we will be forced to yes, repatriate sir. our yes, sir. Uh, uh, bayans. Yes, sir. On our end, uh, defense department, sir, uh, we have a plan for that. Uh, uh, a detailed plan on how we will conduct it. Tapos yung may timeline po, may timeline ito, sir, kung paano namin may gagawin. Uh, uh, Naka-prepare po ito, sir. Yung plan na natin na Pero right now, anong, uh, what is the uh, status on in the ground? All right now, sir, uh, the, the the exercise is being conducted by China. Base my source are open, sir. Open source lang ito is uh, dapat sir patapos na, but there are some na tuloy tuloy na yung ano yung exercise na China dito. We hope, sir, na hindi na po ito mag escalate at. Uh, Nakaantabay po tayo dito. We are closely monitoring this. As I said, sir, we hope that we have a peaceful resolution of the conflict there. Mr. Chair. Uh, sir, Teresa, before you proceed, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Mark Villar. Okay. Yes, Sen. Teresa. Yes, sir. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Uh, dalawang follow-up questions po. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. General, kaugnayon nung line of questioning nung chair. Una po, well, of course, I think all of us around the table share yung hope na hindi na mag escalate mag -de escalate talaga ito. But, um, yun na nga, sa worst case scenario, kung mag escalate pa rin, ano yung mga posibleng spillover effects sa atin dito sa Pilipinas? Um, and then I have a second follow-up question after that, uh, Mr. Chair. Oh, well, ma'am, uh, if there will be uh, an armed confrontation in those areas, and, uh, we hope and pray na hindi talaga man mamayari. Because uh, first, of course, uh, humanitarian crisis. What will be affected ma'am tayo lahat yan. Uh, Next is uh, we know, know very well that yung area na yan, ma'am, yung Taiwan Strait, ay daanan talaga ito ng, ano, ng ating... Uh, it's a sea lane of uh, communication. And uh, it will affect not only us, but grow global. Just like what happened, ma'am, sa ano? Just like what happened sa Russia which, uh, and, and Ukraine. Uh, nararamdaman na natin ang epekto nito. But this time we're talking about the sea lanes kung saan dumadaan ang almost $5 trillion of uh, economy ng buong mundo. So ito magiging epekto, ma'am, niyan. And uh, it will have an open conflict. Uh, we expect also that maybe, maybe, there, may, there will be some refugees coming to us. Kasi tayo yung pinakamalapit sa, sa Taiwan, ma'am. So this might, this, these are the probable implications ng gyeran, ma'am, na ito. Kung magkaroon, ma'am, ng... 
hari nawa talaga sir uh, Mr. Chair hindi 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 mangyare just to uh, exhaust my follow up question on that worst case scenario na ayon nating lahat mangyare if a conflict breaks out uh, what commitments will we will we the Philippines have to honor under the mutual defense treaty with the United States if any yes ma'am uh, doon ma'am sa, sa mutual defense treaty yes uh, we have to honor the mutual defense treaty nandoon po yan naka it's it's it's, it's uh, nakasulat po yan sa ating uh, mutual defense treaty na 1951 with the US but ang ano ma'am dito kasi naka, nakasulat din nakasaad din doon that it will still be according to our constitutional processes so hindi po ito automatic it's the same with the other side sa US it's also it will also be based on their own constitutional processes so yan ma'am yung ano doon hindi po to automatic na magana tayo dito Salamat po, uh, General. Huling follow-up sa ngayon, actually, pag-atras ng konti dun sa pinresent yung priority legislative agenda. Um, pinresent nyo rin po yung National Defense Act. Yung isa ko kasi sanang tanong para sa briefing nyo ngayon na uh, as a result of the requirements of counterinsurgency operations, the Army has received the lion's share of our country's military resources. Panahon na po ba kaya i-rebalance yung resources allocated among Philippine Army, Navy, and Air Force? And kaya ako dito po itinatanong na follow-up kasi sa National Defense Act ba, kasama doon, yung, yun na nga po, yung pag -re align ng mas maraming resources sa Navy at saka sa Air Force. Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, right now, it's happening already. Uh, with... Uh, the success that we have uh, we have uh, achieved in our counter insurgency operations medyo ma'am ano uh, uh, honestly during the the, the first uh, modernization program natin heavy shot sa sa counter insurgency that's why the army gets the lion's share there pero pagdating ma'am dito uh, we now have uh, we are now transitioning from internal defense to external and uh, territorial defense. And that's exactly why alaki ma'am nang nanakuko ang the, the lion's share of the modernization fund right now, program right now, goes to the Air Force and the Navy. We now have our new ships. Meron na tayong mga flying assets. Meron na rin po tayong mga transport planes. And uh, these are all big ticket items that entails a lot of uh, resources and funds. Na ito na ma'am, na-realign na ito sa Air Force at saka sa Navy. The Army still gets yung kanyang requirements ma'am, but the lion's share is uh, being shared by the Air Force and the Navy. Thank you, Your Salamat you. po, General. Thank Salamat, you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Thank, thank you, Senator Teresa. Uh, any questions uh, with regard to the Taiwan conflict from our senators? So we can uh, move on to other topics. Last, last, last question. Senator Talentino. Last question. Uh, General, I confuse you. Uh, every now and then with the name of your predecessor. The reported joint Coast Guard Patrol, is this part of the Mutual Defense Treaty or is this another, is this another uh, oral agreement between the Philippines and the United States? And what role will the Philippine Navy be playing? And I congratulate the Navy because of the previous exercise, the last week in, in uh, Hawaii. Congratulations. Talagang pinupuri kayo ng mga kababayan natin sa Hawaii, lalong-lalo na yung, yung ginawa niyong doning sa, sa historic USS Missouri. So ang tanong ko po, ano yung role ng Navy ngayon dun sa joint patrol ng uh, US Coast Guard, Philippine Coast Guard, sa so West Philippine Sea, at kailan ito magsisimula? believe that since it involves the Coast Guard should be the Philippine Coast Guard who should be commenting on that uh, but though I am aware that the uh, the good senator mentioned about the US Coast Guard I think this is on their part based again on open sources that they are doing this
to make their presence felt more uh, beyond their beyond their uh, territory and already going into the Indo-Pacific area. So I think this is a unilateral decision of the United States and in so doing, I think they are cooperating also with other Indo-Pacific uh, countries who have uh, on their respective Coast Guards. As far as the Philippines is concerned, uh, we always approach with a uh, holistic view especially on our uh, maritime domain, that it is not just the realm of defense, but we are involving all agencies, and it's not just the Coast Guard under the DOTR, but also the Bureau of uh, Fisheries under uh, the DA, to include DNR. So uh, it is not just, sir, uh, we, we are looking, because this is our uh, resources and our maritime domain. So we are doing a holistic approach on this matter. But on the specific uh, query of the senator, I, I, I beg, sir, that I, I think I cannot comment because I think that's the realm of the, the uh, Philippine Coast Guard and I'm not uh, privy on their specific arrangement. Thank you, sir. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator Tolentino. Uh, Vice Admiral uh, Reyes, I understand you have uh, something to present with regard to the uh, AFP moder modernization. Uh, yes, sir. We are. We have prepared a uh, briefing around uh, good for 20 to 25 minutes on an update on the uh, modernization of the armed forces, if the committee so, so desires to. Right now, are you prepared to present? Yes, sir. It's. Uh, okay. I think. Okay. Yung, may I now request the, for the presentation? Okay. To the Committee of National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, uh, chaired by the Honorable Senator Jingo Estrada, the other distinguished senators, members of this committee. I am uh, Vice Admiral uh, Reyes, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and I will be briefing the status of the revised AFP modernization program as of this date. Next slide, please. The purpose of this presentation is to provide updates on the status of the revised AFP modernization program and to give an overview of the proposed a a AFP uh, self-reliance defense posture projects. The scope of presentation is broken down into two parts. Next slide, please. The first part will cover the program mandate and the status of the revised AFP modernization program projects. The second, Part will cover the proposed AFP SRDP projects for fiscal year 2023. As mandated by the next slide, please. As mandated by the Constitution, the AFP is the protector of the people and the state. And as a matter, and as a matter of state policy, as stated in Republic Act 7898, it is hereby declared the policy of the state to modernize the armed forces of the Philippines to a level where it can effectively and fully perform its constitutional mandate to uphold the sovereignty and preserve the patrimony of the Republic of the Philippines. Next slide, please. With the expiration of the AFP modernization program under Republic Act 7898, Congress passed into law Republic Act 10349 in December 2012 otherwise known as the Revised AFP Modernization Act. The Revised Modernization Program shall be acquired in three horizons, each horizon spanning five years. Horizon one is intended to be fully mission capable on internal security operations and humanitarian assistance and disaster response and partial mission capable 
for territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea. Horizon 2 is intended to be fully mission capable for territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea. And further, Horizon 3 aims to be fully mission capable for territorial defense for the whole Philippine territory. Next slide. Uh, let me brief you on the status of the revised AFP modernization projects. Next slide. For Horizon 1, a total of 53 projects were programmed with the objective to be fully mission capable on internal security operations and humanitarian assistance and disaster response, and partially mission capable for territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea. Next slide. As of today, there are 35 completed projects, while there are 17 remaining funded projects and one unfunded project. Next slide. Fifteen remaining projects are now in the contract implementation stage, while the three remaining projects are still in the procurement and contracting stage, all with a remaining funding requirement of 5.2 billion pesos. Next slide, please. In terms of alignment for Horizon 1 projects to initial defense posturing, or 11 out of 53, or 21% of the approved projects, support the objective to be partially mission capable for territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea, and the rest are geared to fill up some gaps of ISO and HADR capability requirements. However, in terms of the program amount, 63 billion, or 65% of the budget, goes to the projects capable of territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea, while the remaining 34 billion or, 30 or 35% goes to ISO, HD, uh, HADR, and counter-terror capabilities. Next slide. Horizon 1 projects have the following core technology. Weapons, next slide. Weapons had the highest budget allocation followed by aircraft, C4I star, vehicles, and other technologies. Next slide. For Horizon 2. Mr. It, Chair. Uh, Senator Teresa. Vice Admiral, if I may, sir, uh, pero overall, so far yung update nyo po sa Horizon 1 projects, kung tama po yung nabasa kong numbers dun sa isang table, 66% of the projects have been implemented, or two-thirds. One-third na lamang po yung kailangan i-complete for Horizon 1. Tama uh, po ba? Halos kompleto na po, ma'am. Ah, yung 65% uh, went to territorial defense and 35% went to Internal security, uh, internal security operations and, and HADR. Disaster response. Ah, so, sorry. So, almost 100 percent. Yes, ma'am. Completo na. As in, 99 percent? Ilang percent po? Uh, only one unfunded lang po yun, ma'am. The rest are on, uh, on, on, on the road of completion, ma'am. Okay po. So, satisfactory po yung progress For Horizon one. Horizon 1. Yes, ma'am. Alright. Salamat, sir. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator De La Rosa. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Previous slide, please. Na, na disrupt ka naman lang. Tuloy tuloy ko na. I disrupt na muna kita ngayon. Balik mo nga yung previous slide pa. Yung table. <coughs> the table, sir. Of the. Oh, yung table yung pie chart mo. Ah, the the pie chart. Two yung slides horizon. back. Sige pa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ito. Hold, please. 
Uh, I'm just curious, ha? Hindi, hindi sa maka-Navy ako. Navy ka, di ba? Uh, hindi, hindi sa maka-Navy ako, ha? Pero bakit napakaliit yung watercraft mo? 0.24%. Hindi ba lang naka-1%? Considering that uh, itong ating uh, Philippines is a high archipelagic uh, country. Ang puro isla tayo. Tapos ang watercraft natin, budget is 0.24 lang. Thank, thank you very much, sir, for your huh? keen observation, sir. Uh, it is true, sir, this is for Horizon 1. Horizon 1? Yes, sir, the first uh, horizon. And you will see, sir, on Horizon 2, sir, the mag increase po yan, sir. Because Palakan. Horizon 1, sir, is to make us more mission to address more on ISO and HADR. That's the purpose, sir, for, for the first horizon of the moder modernization. It's ADR. H -A -D human, yes, sir, for, uh, for basically mean, for disaster re resiliency, sir. Disaster resiliency. U humanitarian assistance and disaster response. Okay. Yes, Pero mag-increase yan. For the horizon, too, sir, as you will be able to see, sir, in the succeeding slides. Sige, thank you. Yes, Salamat. sir. Thank you, sir. If I may continue, Mr. Chair. Please, please proceed. For next slide, please. For Horizon 2, a total of 97 projects were programmed with the objective to be fully mission capable for territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea. Next slide. Currently, there are 15 completed projects while 42 ongoing funded projects and 40 remaining unfunded projects are still in various stages of implementation. Relatedly, there are five additional projects for inclusion in the second horizon list. This will bring a total of 87 projects that would need to be processed. Next slide, please. The 82 remaining approved projects are currently in various stages of implementation. 28 are in the contract implementation stage, 14 are in the procurement and contracting stage, while 40 are, are still in the defense acquisition system planning stage. Next slide. Relative to minimum credible defense posturing in terms of the number of projects, 33 of 97 or 34% of the approved projects support the second horizon objective and the rest are geared to fill up some gaps in ISO and HADR capability requirements. In terms of budget allocation, 254 billion or Almost 60% of the budget goes to the projects capable of territorial defense in the West Philippine Sea. Next slide, please. Horizon 2 has the following core technology construct. Weapons had the highest budget allocation followed by aircraft, watercraft, C4 I-Star, and other technologies. So here you can see, sir, that majority went to aircraft and uh, watercraft or ships. For the, next slide. For the project funding requirement for fis fiscal year 2023 to 2028, next slide. As of today, the projects under Horizon 1 and Horizon 2 plus additional projects have a running total amount of 529.43 billion. Okay, highlight, click please. However, the fund released only amounted to 212.92 billion. 
click, please. Which brings us to the remaining fund requirement of 316.51 billion, including the additional Horizon 2 projects. This translates to only 40.22% of funds released over the required budget to attain a minimum credible defense. Next slide. This is also Shown in the annual fund requirement for implementing projects with multi-year contracting agreement or MICA, shown are the annual appropriations allocated to AFP to the AFP modernization program. Click please. It reflects that the AFP could only implement a new project starting in 2026 if the government will not provide additional allocation over and above the annual fund requirement of the contracted, contracted multi-year project. As to the assessment and conclusion, next slide. Next slide. Mm -hmm. In terms of project implementation timelines, most of the ISO projects would take two years to be delivered or completed after the contracts were signed. Most uh, territorial defense operation projects would take three to five years to be delivered or completed after the contracts were signed. As the Philippine government has a, a limited MOU or bilateral agreement, it takes time to acquire capabilities from some foreign countries, countries which do not readily provide information on their weapon systems. And most weapon systems and integrated platform systems are entered into multi-year contracts or three to six years due to project cost, production capacity, and complexity of system components. Next slide. In terms of fund allocation perspective, the 25 billion yearly appropriation for the revised AFP modernization program will take 12 years to complete the Horizon 1 and Horizon 2 projects and 13 years to complete to include additional projects. The allocation of resources for the moder modernization program is generally seen as a purely capital expenditure, and these are mostly foreign outsourcing as no current industry could provide, especially within the prevailing operational requirements to fill their equipment right after acquisition. Next slide. As we, as we assess the objectives of Horizon 1, and Horizon 2, we can see that majority of the projects in Horizon 1, more so in Horizon 2, are geared towards filling up the gaps in the capability requirements for internal security operations. This causes significant delays in attaining the current Horizon 2 objective. Prior acquisition of what we call game changer projects, such as the C4I star system, missile system, multi-role fighter aircraft, will be a leap forward in realizing the Horizon 2 objective of becoming fully mission capable for territorial defense. In the Horizon 3 requirements should primarily focus on external defense capabilities that will accelerate 
the attainment of its objective while considering the other two domains of space and cyberspace. Next slide. In conclusion, the horizon to objective will not be attained by the end of 2022. And the fund sources for the AFP modernization program are very limited. And the horizon three objective is way beyond the revised AFP modernization program timeline. To attain the credible defense posture, the AFP must, must first reach the minimum credible defense posture. At this, at this juncture, may I now present the updates for the research and development project conducted by the major services research and development centers. Next slide. Mr. Chair. Senator Gutierrez. Uh, good Vice Admiral, bago po kayo dumako dun sa R&D projects, siguro dalawa lang na follow-up questions focus dun po sa modernization program. Yes, ma'am. Opo. Um, uh, una po, related din sa isa sa mga concluding points nyo, how do we ensure that the military's modernization program receives the funding it needs uh, to achieve, uh, well, it's just related to an earlier question of mine sana on yung force structure, but generally na lang po, paano natin matitiyak na yung modernization program ng militar matatanggap yung pondo na kailangan para ma-achieve yung objectives niya kahit per horizon? Um, yun, yun, yun muna po, Vice Admiral, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, as far as the armed forces and the defense, we have periodic uh, reports and status on the on these projects, and we and with coordination with other uh, departments, we are relaying this information. So, so it would suffice to say that we are regularly relaying the uh, the fund requirements, ma'am. And, and uh, of course, it's beyond us, ma'am. We, we just say that this is the status of the projects and we foresee that these are the, the funding, especially if there are additional funding requirements. Salamat, Vice Admiral. Salamat, um, Mr. Chair. And, well, uh, siyempre, simula ng bawat bagong kongreso, it's always a good time na ina-update nyo kami through the committee, through the chair, legislative agenda po ninyo at saka yung funding requirements, lalo na in a few months magsisimula ulit yung budget debates namin dito. So last follow-up question at this point, Mr. Chair. Um, also, as we modernize, uh, sabi nung ilan, we shouldn't make the mistake of preparing to ikanga fight the last war by examining the trends that are shaping the future of armed conflict, such as drone and yung pinag-usapan po natin kaninang cyber uh, warfare. So, uh, are we developing the capacity to manufacture critical military equipment, including drones, domestically? Baka kaugnay na po nung isang priority ledge na sinabi ni uh, General Faustino kanina, Vice Admiral, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for, for bringing that up. It is actually part of the next part, which is the self-reliance defense posture. Although I'm not so sure, ma'am, if I can definitively answer the query of the good senator when it comes to drone technology. Uh, that is uh, something that we have drone capability, I suffice to say, but do the, the, the drone technology on a defense capacity, I cannot really definitely answer right now, ma'am. That's all right. Salamat po, Vice Admiral. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I... Uh Senator Mark, I, I just like to uh, clarify. I, I, I see this term used a lot: the minimal, minimum, minimum credible defense posture. What is the technical definition of? It? Does it mean we have uh, the ability to repel uh, a possible uh, uh, aggression from a foreign, or is it? Does it more pertain to local uh, counterinsurgency or uh, internal protection? When you say the minimum credible defense posture, is it? Uh, what is the technical definition of that? The, 
the working definition of the defense and the armed forces on when we call uh, minimum credible defense posture is the ability first to uh, deter aggression uh, for all kinds of threats in the four identified domains, which is land, sea, air, and cyber. So that is first is to deter, and the second level is to defend, and the last is to defeat. So those are our levels of uh, uh, when we uh, look at our capabilities. So when we say minimum is uh, basically to show uh, perceived adversaries that if ever you have plans, uh, we can also hurt you back. Uh, thank you, and I hope that uh, we can achieve this sooner than 12 years, and that we hope we can, uh, here in the Senate, we can help you to achieve this uh, posture sooner rather than later. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Bato. Just uh, entertaining the thought of using uh, these terms, the minimum uh, credible credible uh, defense posture. Isip isip ko ba baka yung ating minimum is incredible. <laughs> minimum incredible. Uh, well, uh, it's good to hear na yung ating uh, minimum defense posture pala is uh, posture, yung posture natin as far as uh, enemy, in, uh, perceived enemies are concerned, ay maramdaman, ma, maramdaman nila na they can hurt, we can hurt them also if they want to hurt us. Parang ganon. So, I hope ma-achieve natin yan talaga. Uh, materially, uh, in all aspects, dapat ma-achieve natin yan. Kaya, kaya nga, uh, kunting deviation lang, kunti, uh, Mr. Chair, if, if I may, this is about the, uh, alimbawa, pag magkakaroon ng external aggression coming from other countries, ang worry ko lang is, uh, ano bang, may estimate ba tayo na number ng reserves na pwede nating matap at mamobilize anytime kapag uh, kasi that's part of the minimum uh, credible defense posture uh, magmamayabang tayo sa kanila na pupustura tayo na kaya namin kayong we can strike you back if you strike us pero yun pala ampaw pala yung ating reserve na inaasahan, wala pala tayong maasahan na reserve so may I know kung meron ba tayong mamobilize na reserve kung darating tayo sa usapang aggression, external aggression? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and, and with that, sir, this, that is why we welcome very much the, the pronouncement on the uh, review and possible amendment of the National Defense Act to include the uh, looking at the ROTC program of the country because it is uh, clearly said that, that although the, the Philippines uh, renounce war as a policy uh, and based in the Constitution we are going to to have a small regular armed force but a mobilizable reserve force and this mobilizable reserve force although I cannot give the exact numbers today uh, the mobilizable reserve force should be looked at not only to deter aggression but basically uh, to help the country, especially in times of uh, calamities and, both, and also for national development. So the development of the mobilizable reserve force is not just only for defense and security. And we are really looking forward for this uh, to be uh, developed and to, for the country to realize that uh, it is not just for defense, but for the overall development of our country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But ang aking lang concern is uh, yun nga, uh, sana hindi succeeding uh, meetings natin makabigay kayo ng number para magkakaroon tayo ng estimate 
kung projections, yes, sir. kung paano. Kung For right now, sir, baka, we ah, have 1.2 million. 1.2 million? Yes, sir. At any given time, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have them. Uh, we have three uh, categories: the ready reserve, the affiliated, affiliated reserve, and the standby reserve. All in all, 1.2 million, sir. Uh, th that's already across the the uh, armed forces and the whole Philippines already. Ah, thank you. That, yes, that's sir. part of our posturing. Yes, sir. We posture natin yan. Oh, sige. Try us. At uh, we have 1.3 million. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Salamat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bato. Mr. Chair. Senator Good One. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Better One. Anyway, um, Admiral, may I ask, uh, in line with the minimum cred credible defense posture, no? yung Horizon 1 and Horizon 2, so, uh, so the AFP um, acquire new assets, so, or the Air Force, for example, uh, dito natin nakuha yung FA-50, no? at least nagkaroon tayo ng fighter jets, supersonic fighter jets after... Uh, since 2006 ba, yung last na lumipad yung F-5 natin, nagkaroon tayo ng F-A-50 recently. So, meron na tayong uh, fighter jets. Tapos, um, sa Navy naman, at least we are uh, gone are the days. Wala na siguro tayo ng mga World War II. Uh, uh, do we still use those assets? No? With the arrival of the One Luna, the Del Pilar class frigates, and so on. So, these are all, ano, at least malaki na yung pinagbago ng AFP in the recent years. Ang tanong ko lang, um, doon sa minimum uh, credible defense, nasaan na tayo yung percentage so that uh, the committee would know para and moving forward yung mga uh, future acquisitions. No? So uh, after all of this, for example, itong uh, FA-50, alam ko, ano lang ito, stop gap, ang pang gap, ano lang ito, fill in ng gap, no? kasi lead in fighter to Do we plan to get F-16s? No? Uh, probably talaga magkaroon tayo ng talagang credible defense na talagang kahit pa paano eh, hindi yung mag-iisip yung external uh, um, aggressor na mag -iisip. So, nasang percentage na tayo ng Horizon 1 and Horizon 2? Based on the percentage, thank you, sir, uh, for, for, for that uh, question. For the first Horizon, sir, uh, based on the presentation, we have achieved uh, more than 90 percent, should I say almost 100 percent, uh, especially once those ongoing projects will be completed. For Horizon 2, sir, uh, we'll already complete the ISO or the Internal Security Operation Capability and HADR if all are delivered, uh, and, but we are still lacking on the uh, credible defense posture for the West Philippine Sea. And as, as reported, sir, that is, and we are looking at this uh, because we still have also funding uh, challenges especially for Horizon 2. And, and based on that, sir, uh, we, with the permission of, of uh, the OIC, the DND, that's why DND uh, required for a mandatory review of all ongoing Horizon 2 projects uh, before we can, uh, because we expect Horizon 2 to end at the end of this year before we will start formally with the Horizon 3 programs. That's why there is an ongoing mandatory review right now, sir, of, of uh, Horizon 2 projects, especially for those uh, unfunded. Thank you, sir. Uh, likewise, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, follow-up lang. Uh, Doon sa Horizon 1 and Horizon 2, kasama rito yung acquisition ng mga Black Hawk, if I, if I can remember, no? The Black Hawk uh, helicopters and uh, yung mga 412. Uh, tanong ko lang, wala na tayong ginagamit. Do we still use the UEs? Kasi ito yung medyo... Ano to, Vietnam uh, era, vet, ano, delikadong ano, dapat tayo, huwag na tayong gumamit na gano'n. Because we were, the AFP before was acquiring refurbished. So, tinatigil na to. So, we are not acquiring any more refurbished air assets. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it is true, sir, that we have a sizable fleet already of uh, Black Hawks or what we call the SR-75 Black Hawks uh, Sikorsky helicopters. I, I believe we still have in, in the inventory uh, those uh, UH-1H. Uh, although, sir, I, I will not say totally that uh, w there is still a possibility and it will depend on the Philippine Air Force if they still plan to refleet that uh, particular type of aircraft. But if with enough funding, sir, uh, I would suffice to say that uh, all our assets can still be sustainable, sir. And we will be do the 
the proper recommendation when the time comes. Thank you, sir. And the uh, last question, Mr. Chair. Ah, nakita ko doon, no? Doon sa concern kanina ni Sir Bato, no? Doon sa... This part of Horizon 3 na siguro na dumakas, tumaas na yung sa Philippine Air Force, Philippine Navy. So talagang ang ano natin dito, external na. So the, this includes the new modern uh, multi-role jet fighters already, no? Siguro kung uh, yung F-16 o Saab, whatever, BGN, di ba? Yan yung mga ating tinitignan. And uh, do we still... Uh, continue to uh, acquire also naval assets ano po yung mga ano just to just briefly para lang magkantay na idea anong kasama dito the the all branches of service are to include the army have uh, submitted their priority listing so that's why it will go through a uh, vetting process and with the uh, with the directive of the department of national defense on the mandatory review all of this will be taken into consideration, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's all. Probably we can ask further in the next hearing, probably in regards to the modernization. Thank you, uh, Senator JV. Any other questions coming from our centers? Can you please uh, proceed? Matagal pa. Uh, Around uh, eight slides, Mr. Chair. Because we will have a session of, at 3 o'clock. Can we go to the forward, please? At this juncture, let me present the updates on the research and development project conducted by the major services, research and development centers from fiscal year 2010 to 2022. Next slide. So far, there are 47 completed research and development or R&D projects with only one ongoing for the Philippine Air Force, which is the establishment of a bomb manufacturing facility. A total of 73 million was used in pursuing these projects. However, it should be noted that there were no funds released for SRDP since fiscal year 2010. These projects were funded either by the major service MOOEs or other government agencies, primarily the DOST's grant in aid program. Mr. Chairman, Senator Risa. Thank you, and I apologize to uh, to Vice Admiral, Mr. Chair. If I may just place on record yung mga kalahating dose ng tanong ko pasana. Siguro isa submit ko na lang in writing sa DND at AFP. I, I just have to leave, Mr. Chair, for a meeting. So mga tanong po tungkol sa whether we have a military. Maybe I'll share with my Mista with Sendoroy. Greetings sa uh, aming misa si Asik Adjawan. Ad uh, questions lang, uh, Vice Admiral and General, about uh, um, do we have a military, uh, does our country possess a middle-income military? Kasi middle-income country tayo economically. Do we already have also a middle-income military or even a military comparable to that of our neighbors and potential rivals? And hanggang po, Mr. Chair, sa huli ko pang natitirang tanong na are we taking sufficient care of our veteran veterans na note ko rin naman po yung may panukalang batas po kayo sa ledge agenda tungkol sa ating mga veterano what is the current status of initiatives to update the military pension system and are our veterans and retirees receiving the medical and psychosocial care they need so kung maari po Mr. Chair submit ko na lang po yes. uh, sa komite through you po para uh, ma, ma i forward po sa ating mga defense and military officials. At maraming salamat po sa inyo, sir. Mabuhay po kayo. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Risa. Uh, the ComSec is required to uh, get copies of the questions of uh, Senator Tiveros and uh, provide questions to, and direct the questions to, uh, submit the questions to the Department of National Defense. Please proceed. I will continue, Mr. Chair. Further, complex projects were conducted in collaboration with government agencies and the academe, while the others were conducted in-house by the research development centers of the AFP, uh, where most are fabrications or models. Lastly, during their implementation, there is no explicit organization at the GHQ level that administers these projects for jointness and ease of implementation. Next slide.
Let me present the proposed AFP, AFP SRDP projects for 2023. Next slide. 28 SRDP projects are proposed with a total estimated cost of 655 million pesos. Notably, the majority of these projects are the conduct of research and development in the areas of technology, such as platforms, mobility, intelligence surveillance recon reconnaissance, or ISR, electronic warfare, C4I, basic arms, engineering support, force protection or survivability, and projects on human resource development for research and development. Next slide. The Philippine Army has four projects with an estimated cost of 55 million pesos. These are as follows. Anti-RPG screen for armored vehicles, armoring of the KM450 as an alternative security and escort vehicle, force protection equipment and development of controller-operated battle-ready armament or Project Cobra. Next slide. On the other hand, the Philippine Air Force has 10 projects that need 70 million for implementation. These include the development of level one and level two unmanned aerial systems, 110 and 260 pounds low drag general purpose bombs, C-130 roll-on and roll-off medical equipment, ground-based air defense gun platform, ground support and auxiliary systems for the F-A-50, and a hybrid power system. Next slide. For the Philippine Navy, SRDP projects will touch on the C4IS system, such as command and control communication suite, spectrum management and protection system, and modular underwater surveillance system. There are also ship operations augmentation platforms, such as the autonomous unmanned vessel, ship to shore transport vessel, Battery low. Uh, Vice Admiral Reyes, yes, Siguro you can just submit the uh, your presentation to the to this. Uh, committee. Yes, sir. You'll it's just submit it, sir. Yes. Anyway, these are the list, sir. As uh, we were required to prepare this, sir. Yes. And uh, thank you, sir, for 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 uh, allowing us to give our update on the. AFP modernization program and a uh, an idea on the SRDP projects of the AFP for next year. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, General Reyes, uh, Vice Admiral Reyes, uh, General uh, Secretary Faustino, and to all the uh, USEC uh, Madriaga, ASEC uh, Iyawan, ASEC Ramos, Ramos. <laughs> Attorney Lim, Commodore Pajardo. Uh, thank you for uh, gracing this uh, invitation of uh, the first hearing on the of the Committee of National Defense. Maybe we can have a, a second hearing probably next week, and we will tackle the NTFLCAC and other more issues regarding the national defense. So thank you very much. Uh, the meeting is adjourned.